I believe this, this company, Boston Dynamics, was spun out of something that was going on at MIT. So you are very familiar with this project. When you look at the video, it's totally mind-blowing. Tell us more about what these robots can do. So Boston Dynamics was founded by an MIT professor, Mark Rabus, who, who gave up his tenure and left MIT to pursue his vision to create some of the coolest robots uh, in the world. And so they, they specialize in locomotion, how a robot moves through the world. And they've created some uh, amazing robots like Big Dog and the robot Cheetah and latest Wildcat. And I know that when I show the videos of these robots to my students, it captures their imagination. It's just uh, really, uh, it's right at the cutting edge of what you can do with a robot in a, in a challenging dynamic environment today. So obviously we're, we're looking at how they move right now, but what are some of the practical applications of these robots? I mean, it seems like something that the military should be buying, not necessarily Google. Okay, well, I do know that Boston Dynamics has done a number of contracts for the military. For example, they're, they're building a robot called Atlas, which is being used in something called the DARPA Robotics Challenge, which is happening in the next week or two in Florida. And my colleagues, Seth Teller and Russ Tedrake, are leading the MIT team. There are about 15 teams competing for a prize to build a robot that can use tools and climb up ladders and drive vehicles and maybe like respond in say a disaster scenario such as say after the Fukushima uh, disaster. And so these are robots that can interact with the physical world in a very powerful and capable way. And yes, that would be relevant to the military, but I think there are a range of civilian applications. Anything that involves going out into the field, in mines, in uh, sort of disaster response situations. Interesting. Now, I want to bring in John Ehrlichman. And John, you've spoken with Google's head of mergers and acquisitions. There's been so much speculation about what all of these robotics companies uh, could be working towards, perhaps a production line. Maybe they'll all be part of some uh, long-term Google manufacturing supply chain. You know, what's looking most likely at this point? And, and some people joking that Big Dog could track down some of those Amazon dr drones, a new form of Amazon <laughs> versus Google uh, fight. But, you know, I think what's really important here, uh, well, there are a couple of things to highlight. Google does make lots of acquisitions, at least once a month, in all sorts of different areas. We shouldn't be trying to sort of tie this back to what Google has been traditionally, because in the early years, many of the deals that Google were doing were building a moat around its advertising business, stuff like DoubleClick and YouTube. But the deals they do now, coupled with some of the various projects we talk about, from driverless cars to the Google Glass, which you highlighted there, to you know balloons that are powering the internet, uh, Google Fiber, all these are, are, are Google looking for its next leg of growth. And, and a lot of times the conversation on what Google is becoming is more like a new version of GE, looking for those new legs of growth uh, as opposed to, you know, finding an exact way to tie this back to what Google has been in the past. So the answer is, we don't know just yet. We do know, as you highlighted, they've done a lot of robotics deals, but I think this is a company that is ambitious, always has been, and is trying to figure out where its future is going to take it, tied to the technology that it can go out and buy, uh, because it's Google. Now, John Leonard, you mentioned that the founder, obviously, he must be very passionate about this company because he gave up his tenure at MIT to work on this. You know, what do you imagine compelled him to sell to Google? Well, let's see. I, <clears throat> I can't imagine. I, I know that uh, MIT faculty want to make impact on the world. And I think uh, my best guess is that investment would help them create a greater impact. Um, I, the one way I view this is a long-term investment in the core hard technologies of robotics. And if I, if I use the analogy of the self-driving vehicle, something I, I follow very closely, clearly that's been a big success for Google. And the, one of the secrets to that project was they went and hired the very best people in the world uh, to lead that effort after something called the DARPA Urban Challenge in 2007. So today, with this acquisition and, the other, and several of the other recent acquisitions, they're getting some of the very top superstar talent in the world, uh, again, affiliated with some of these DARPA challenges. And so it, it, um, I don't know where it might lead in terms of the uh, very short term, but in the long term, it's, a, it's an investment in the sort of core fundamental technologies of interacting with the world. And, and I've got to think that has a value.